Now let's look a little deeper into the situation in Iraq. Near the, near the top, if not at the top of the agenda for Iraq's new Prime Minister is the fight against Islamist militants of the Islamic State, formerly known as ISIS. How will this play out and how can that be achieved? Let's ask an expert. We have Johns Hopkins Professor of Conflict Management, Daniel Sower. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. My pleasure. So the, we, we know now that the U.S. is, is d doing limited airstrikes against the Islamist militants in Iraq, the Islamic State militants. Uh, is that going to be enough to defeat these guys? No, it's not. Uh, this is a stopgap measure. It seems to me what the United States has to do is to put together a real coalition, both Iraqi and Syrian, as well as more broadly internationally, to attack uh, the Islamic State from all sides. It's shown that it's a capable fighting force. It can take and hold territory, and uh, a few airstrikes uh, just aren't going to cause it to deflate suddenly. And, and how can getting a coalition in a fractured country uh, work? I mean, is, is that even possible? I know the Kurds are getting themselves ready, uh, you know, get, getting some arms from, from the U.S. and they're going to be attacking. But the, the Kurds and the Baghdadi government have traditionally been in, in something of a, a tense situation. I think there is a deal to be made, a deal in which the Kurds get... Uh, more autonomy, they get control over their own oil resources, and they get uh, the money that Baghdad has owed them for quite some time now, for months. Uh, but I think it's not only the Kurds, it's also the Sunni. The, the Islamic State is a Sunni movement, and it's absolutely vital that there be Sunnis who are prepared to fight against it. And in order to do that, you've got to bring the Sunnis more into the central government, but you've also got to give them more autonomy in the provinces where they're a majority. And at the same time, you have to reconfigure the, what remains of the Iraqi security forces so they can be enabled to drive north against the Islamic State. This is going to be a complex and difficult operation. It's going to take time. And uh, the new prime, you've been calling him the new prime minister, but the fact is that he won't be prime minister until he's confirmed in parliament. And uh, that could take as much as 30 days. So we're still in a period of flux. A period of flux. Let's actually listen to President Obama again uh, talking. I urge all Iraqi political leaders to work peacefully through the political process in the days ahead. Now, this new Iraqi leadership has a difficult task. It has to regain the confidence of its citizens by governing inclusively and by taking steps to demonstrate its resolve. The United States stands ready to support a government that addresses the needs and grievances of all Iraqi people. And, of course, that was President Obama. Uh, Professor Sowa, will the U.S. just stand by and, and watch this happen, or does the U.S. need to be in there, you know, coaching, making things happen? Because this, this, uh, this, this Islamist militants uh, seem to be diabolical. Well, I think the U.S. will be in there coaching and facilitating the political process as well as helping on the military side. And there's one vital step that has to be taken, which is to enable uh, Prime Minister Maliki to retire safely. He uh, will want protection and he'll want amnesty. And that's another deal that has to be made in the next 30 days. It's a complex operation, and the U.S. will have to be uh, on top of it at all stages, even though its influence in Iraq is greatly reduced from what it once was. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your great insight, Daniel Sower, Professor of Conflict Management at Johns Hopkins.